Hi everyone, so I've bought some stuff for the van. So Amazon was having a sale the other day and I've seen this done uh, on another YouTube video channel. Um, so if you guys are familiar with uh, Darren at the Urban Motorhome, I'll put a link in the uh, description below. Um, but he's put these blink video doorbells on the side of his motorhome. Um, and that allows him to see what's going off outside at night. Um, when the blinds are shut but it also allows him to see what's going off when he's not at the van um, which sounds like a really good idea to me um, if you do a kind of wild camping free camping not on campsite camping type of things and sometimes you need to know what's going off outside so if, if it's late at night and you've got the blinds shut and you um, you hear a vehicle pull up outside you don't really want to be going out there until you know what's out there and you don't really want to be opening the blinds to let them see you just in case you know security first safety first what Darren did with his motorhome was he got three doorbells um, he put one at the back of each side pointing forwards and he put one on the back pointing backwards I thought I'd be clever I don't know whether this is going to pay off or not, um, but I decided to buy an outdoor camera for the back facing one um, because it's going to be quite high up. I don't really fancy trying to change the batteries on it or anything like that when it's that high up. So it, with the back camera um, unit, you can also buy a solar panel. So this basically is a unit that you attach this into. Um, and then it becomes solar powered to power your camera which will sit on the back of the van and hopefully I'll never have to do anything with it other than maybe wash the lens every now and then. I just don't really fancy taking a ladder with me on holiday because, well, it's bulky, it weighs something and yeah, could do without it. So I just thought I'd be clever. It might not pay off. I may end up going for another doorbell, uh, but we'll see how we go. What I've also got is with this doorbell, I bought the sync module. Now the sync module, when you plug it into a USB stick, allows you to record. It's like, it be becomes like a CCTV DVR system. So it basically records your cameras. Also, I believe. Never played with these before. Um, so I just thought I'd bring you along for the ride and see what happens. Um, these are also little mounting plates to screws. Um, so basically you attach this, this to the side of the van and then you put the doorbell on it and it angles the doorbell towards the front of the van instead of straight out to the side. So I think Darren did this with his um, and basically it gives you a, quite a good field of view you can see the side of the van and you can see what's going off towards the front of the van and then the camera at the back shows what's going off at the back of the van so there's very little in the way of um, blind spots i suppose right in front of the van would be a blind spot and maybe no i don't think there'd be a, i don't think there'd be a blind spot in the corner i think the one on the side and the one actually on the back would probably be enough to cover that blind spot so i think Around the back of the van and down the sides is probably going to be covered by these three cameras. But we'll see, won't we? So, um, yeah, let's unpack and see what, what happens. Scissors. Okay. batteries so the screw holes in there the screw screw holes in there and there's a screw thread in there so we'll screw that onto there that's going to go on the side of the van might have to get my glasses in a minute I actually can't see ground wires are they are they aerials 
might be aerials. There's another mount there. This is the sink box by the looks of it. That's quite small. That's smaller than I thought it would be. Um, a mains plug. Well, we're not going to need that in the van because it needs to power off USB. USB charge. Oh, this is for the for this sink unit. Okay, we will need this cable. Oh, that's interesting. So this you this kit comes with an angle bracket. So I actually didn't need to order two. I only needed to order one because these are about six pounds each, I think. So could potentially send one of those back. Concern with this is that it feels a little bit heavy and I'm concerned that it's going to fall off. I don't really want to sycaflex this to the back of the van because I can imagine that the technology of this is going to be superseded quite quickly and the length, the lifespan of the van is going to be a lot longer. And I don't really want to mark the back of the van for something that's only going to be on there a year or two. So let's just see how we get on with this. Okay, it's not quite as bad as I thought it might be. But there's not much of a, a flat surface on the back of there. I was hoping to use sticky pa uh, sticky gel tape on the back of there to, t to, set, uh, to attach it to the back of the van. But there's not much of a surface area on that. So I might have to come up with a plan. And then that is the back plate. Okay, so, well, maybe we could... I was going to say we could maybe stick that to the back of the van, but the, there are batteries in there. But then again, we shouldn't need to change the batteries, should we? Because the solar panel. Maybe we maybe we tape that to the back of the van. Okay, so you can angle the solar panel. So we probably just want to angle it upwards, I suppose. And then there's a cable that comes from that that's going to presumably... Okay, so that, that moves already. Where's my camera? Open and close by rotating what, that. Okay, that's a grommet. Use the included tool to unscrew back cover. Included tool. Right. This has batteries, but these aren't rechargeables, are they? I'm going to get my glasses. Okay, got my glasses. There's a USB connector there, which that will fit into. It says lithium only, which suggests it's rechargeable. What's this say? Lithium. Okay. Right, we'll, we need to put batteries in this, then, aren't we? Well, we need something needs to have batteries because otherwise it won't work at night. But if there's already batteries in that, then we don't need batteries in this. So we probably need to have a look in there. Or does this just power up? Because we've already got some charge in there. Who knows? Let's get a screwdriver. Okay, let's see what it says. That's got a battery in it. And a tag. Right. That's not going to be live until I pull that tag out. So now the tag's out, what happened to that screw? In my mind, I don't need batteries in the camera if there's batteries in this as well. I'm just thinking about saving weight. Oh, there's the screw. In theory, this should power the camera now that I've taken that tag out. 
Yeah, so I've got a red light on there now. So I don't think we need to put batteries in this camera. Yeah, that looks nice. So if I then plug that onto there. Okay, and we'll put that grommet back in. Hang on a minute, no, we can't put the grommet back in, otherwise, how's that going to attach? So does that just go straight onto there? So there's a, there's basically a, a circle of some description on there, which I imagine is just going to be a bayonet connection. Or does it just push on? Okay, I don't know if that clicked on or not, but it's on nicely. Oh, now then, it's flashing red. <laughs> I'm not sure if I like the idea of that. I wonder what that's for. I can imagine that being infrared at night. I wonder if you can turn that off. Anyway, that's going to be on the, the back of the van. Not that heavy, but we'll see. It might be all right with magic tape because that actually is quite flat and I can't imagine needing to replace that at all or very often. Well that's one camera kind of assembled that would be attached to the wall of a house to hook that on too but I don't think we're going to be doing that because that involves screwing. I don't want to screw into the back of the van. Might actually have to look at some instructions. What's this say? How to mount? Getting started is easy. Download the Blink Home Monitor app. Attach the back plate of the doorbell to your home. Yeah, well again, we're not going to be screwing that onto the van. We'll be using tape on there and then hoping we'll hope for the best. For more setup, mounting and hardware installations instructions, go to blink.com forward slash setup. Well, very handy, but you haven't really told me what those wires are for. So what's in here? A battery pack. Right, we've got four batteries here. Lithium only. Okay. No, I know what these are for. These are for powering it from your doorbell wiring in the house. So no, they're not aerials. That's, um, that's power. Ignore that. Um, okay, so we've got a flashing red, which probably means it's not connected to anything. I wonder if that's only flashing because it's not connected to something. That would be handy. Because then if we connect the blink module, then maybe it'll stop flashing. That'd be nice. I certainly don't want that flashing red when it's pointed towards the front of the van. Can't be having that. Download the Blink Home Monitor app. And add your sync module 2 to the account. Okay, so we're going to plug USB into there. And then that USB is going to plug into a socket. So I have a blue light on there. Uh, and now, I, well, I need my phone now, don't I? Which I am conveniently recording with. I'm just going to jump in here because I've just noticed I've not pointed out something that's going to be really important. This whole system relies on you having a Wi-Fi system inside your van. And so inside my van, I've got a mobile, uh, well, I've got a router that's got a mobile SIM card in it. And that gives me an internet connection when I'm out and about. And then the router broadcasts a Wi-Fi signal, just like you'd have in the router of your own home broadband. Um, so effectively, my van has broadband using a SIM card. And then the cameras each connect to that broadband in just the same way as they would do if you were at home. Um, and also the sync module also connects to that um, Wi-Fi too. So I just thought I'd point that out because I think um, without that, this system's not going to work for you. Okay, so the first thing is to go to the App Store, or probably the Play Store if you're on Android, and we'll download the Blink Home Monitor app. 
once it's downloaded we're going to click open and the first thing we're going to need to do here is register an account with Blink. You'll need to enter an email address and once you've done that it'll send you a code to your email mailbox and you'll need to go and get that code and enter it on the screen here. They're also very careful, they want to get your phone number as well, so they'll do the same, same sort of thing. They'll send a code to your mobile phone number and you'll need to enter it here. Given that this is a CCTV system, you probably want to allow the notifications. The next thing we need to do is set up the sync module so we'll click on the sync module and it wants to access the camera to be able to um, scan the QR code that's on the back of the sync module. Then we're going to create a new system with it. We'll give the new system a name. In this case I'm going to call mine Van. And now it's asking to make sure that the LEDs are flashing in that way on the actual Blink Sync device. Next, we let the Blink system connect to our Wi Fi network. So we we'll click Allow. We find the network that we're going to connect to. And then we enter the password that we use for that normal Wi-Fi network. Next we're going to add the Wi-Fi cameras um, we need to do each of the three cameras in just the same way that we did the hub just now. Having added the first camera, Blink will then force you, by the looks of it, onto their trial account to give you cloud recording. I'm not sure that I want that particularly, but it didn't seem to be an option, so I've just kind of gone with it. Okay, so this is what I've done in the end. Put the doorbell up there. Because it balances out this particular design of the van, I think. It looks a little bit less obvious because there's a kick to the back edge of the kitchen window. So this kind of looks a little bit like that kick. So in my mind, that looks a little bit better. We've also mounted the rear camera up there. Again, it's the, the, the cycle rack's a little bit out of balance with the back of the van. So that looks okay, I think, because uh, it's a little bit out of balance to the left. Kind of finishes it off, I think. So that works all right. And I've put the other doorbell on that side. So what do I think of the Blink system now that I've had it for a while? Um, well, I'm quite impressed actually. Um, it's it's quite good. It's well, it's worked well. Um, one of my main concerns was um, that because it's a, a motion sensing system, that when we're driving down the road um, and there's passing scenery and passing cars, that it would then drain the battery on the doorbells and the, the rear camera. Um, thankfully. It turns out that the Blink system has an arm and disarm feature. Um, so when the Blink system is disarmed, it do actually doesn't do any motion detecting. So for the ma vast majority of the time, the system can be disarmed, 
Um, it's only really when I'm not away, or when I am away from the van, or um, it's late at night, and I want to know what's going on around the van, um, then I can arm it. And then at that point, the uh, doorbells and the camera are sensing what's around. Um, so it's only really then that it's, there's any battery drain going off. Um, so that's good. I'm quite happy with that. Um, the other thing I noticed was that you can vary the intensity of the infrared light that each camera emits. So for um, maximum vision at night, so if you're in a very dark place and you want to get um, a lot of distance on in the view of the camera, then you can turn the intensity of the infrared up to maximum. I think there's three settings. I uh, think it's low, medium, high. Um, and so if you're in a really dark place, um, then you can imagine that um, a vehicle that's parked a few dist a few vehicle lengths away, you might, no not, not, might not be able to see it if it's on the lowest setting. Uh, but turn it up to the highest setting and then you can see it properly. Obviously, the flip side of that is that you're using more battery uh, because the infrared is on and brighter. Um, but yeah, the choice is there and, that, and that's good. I, I quite like that. Um, the other thing, I think we were talking about uh, blind spots at the back of the van. And the, there is a potential blind spot where the back camera doesn't reach quite around to the side of the van as far as the doorbells that are on the side of the van can see. So there is a slight um, blind spot kind of off at an angle from each back corner but I don't think it's likely that somebody's going to make use of that and be able to approach the van without being seen I think that's unlikely so I'm still quite happy with it um, you can see enough I think it's important that for reference you can see part of the side of the van on the doorbells on the side so you can see how far out somebody is if you're watching them on the camera um, and again, the back camera, you can tilt and turn that camera on the little adjustment inside the solar housing. So you can adjust where that points to as well. So that's pretty good as well. Um, another of the concerns that I had was, obviously, these are doorbells. And by virtue of them being doorbells, you might imagine that people are going to start pressing them just to annoy you. Um, you know, if you're walking past a van and it's got a doorbell on the side, why wouldn't you press the doorbell? So um, I had to think about that and I thought, well, I've dealt with this in two ways. Firstly, I've put some black insulation tape across the front of the doorbell to slightly disguise the fact that it might be a doorbell. Um, if you look too, if you look closely, you can still see that it is. But at first glance, you won't notice that it's a button. Um, so given that um, it doesn't look like a button you might not press it but if somebody does press it then there's another thing uh, in as much as you can turn down the volume of the chime so that when somebody presses it you can actually turn it down to off so a press of the doorbell actually registers nothing on my app and I don't get notified um, so I've tested it I press the doorbell nothing happens so uh, again, I'm quite happy with that. Um, so yeah, it's another tick. Um, I was concerned because it forced me into having a trial account. Um, I didn't really know what was going to happen after the trial ended. Um, so now I can tell you um, that after the trial ends, um, I needed to turn the hub off. So that little sink device um, I needed to unplug the power to that and then plug it back in again and even after doing that the cameras appeared to not to really want to do anything didn't really want to record to that sync device but don't panic um, they just took a while um, so within an hour or so I found that actually the cameras did start recording to that sync device so don't worry about that um, so 
yeah they, they start recording and it looks just the same um so you go into the app and you can motion detect you can get the footage to record to the usb stick off that sync module and you can replay the events just in the same way as you did when they were recording to the cloud into uh, blinks uh, servers so again i'm quite happy with that that works quite well um so yeah all in all um i think it's a good system um it's working quite well for me um so if you fancy giving it a go give it a go so yeah thanks for sticking with me uh, i know this was a bit of a slow video um but um hopefully you'll have enjoyed the, the journey that uh, we've all been on and uh yeah if the if if this is of use to you, obviously, please subscribe to the channel because there's plenty more where this came from. There's plenty more videos already made and there's plenty more to come in the future. So, yeah, please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, that would be fantastic.